In this lesson, we're going to cover Angular material using Angular's router. We'll use lazy loaded routes with named outlets and nested outlets. The first thing we're going to do in this lesson is create a new project by doing ng new and then the name of your project. We're going to create this using SCSS for further project setup. We'll also do ng add schematic so we can add the at Angular material. There's a series of questions that this will prompt you for. You can select the indigo pink if you'd like. Otherwise, we are going to create a custom theme anyway, so you don't necessarily need to choose anything at this point. Please set up the Hammer.js, so you hit yes, and the browser innovation for yes. It'll then go through and install your NPM packages once again. If you have VS Code, go ahead and do code and then space dot. It'll open VS Code. If you don't have the terminal open yet, you can hit control tilde and it'll open a terminal within VS Code. Just to see that we have a working project at this time, go ahead and do ng space serve, and this will open up Angular's browser locally. When we were running through the project setup, we chose routing for the Angular project, so we automatically in our source folder under app, we'll see app.routing.ts, sorry, app-routing.module.ts. And this will show that there's only empty routes at this time. That's why you're seeing the main page in app.component.html appearing when we do the serve command. I like to keep everything off my main app area. So we're going to go ahead and create a new modules area by doing ng g is for generate, m is for module. This will create a folder under modules side nav that we can then place our components in as well. So to create your component, you can do ng g c is for component and that same area modules slash side nav. If you take a look in our files folder structure, you'll see app module side nav, the component is in there as well as the side nav module. Now we can take a look at what the name of the side, side nav module is and the selector for it. So if you go to side nav.component.tf, you'll see that the selector is app dash side nav. We need to put that into our HTML of our app.component.html. So that's our first component that we'll see. We need to import the module into app.module.ts so that the selector is available to inject into the HTML. You'll notice if you start to import that into your app.module that it's actually not available yet. And that's because we haven't exported it from the side nav mod. So we need to take and do exports out of a module so that you can import it into the next module. Otherwise, the component won't be known from that module. So if we navigate back to sidenav.module.ts, we will actually add to its declaration a exports and then put the side nav component. If you happen to go back to app.component.html and you see that it's got the red squigglies underneath of it, that's often because the TS compiler hasn't caught up yet and it's not really an error. So sometimes I'll close that window and reopen it just to make sure. We should still be serving the project, but if not, do ng space serve and then you'll see that the side nav works should appear. I'd like to call this the beginning of our project. So if you open the git command in VS Code or the, the git pane, you can actually put a message in and that will start our initial commit for this project. You can navigate to the side nav module and we'll start beginning by importing the material objects that we need to run this with. So the mat side nav module will be the first one that we're going to implement. Just want to note in, at this time that I am running Angular module 7.2.1. If that makes any differences, it shouldn't at this time, I don't believe. But if you're at a lower version, you might be missing some of the features that we're going to cover. Once you finish importing the material side nav module from Angular Material, we can then go to the HTML and wipe out the side nav works area. The side nav itself actually includes three different areas. The main container is mat side nav container, and then it has the mat side nav, which is the actual part to the left, and then the mat side nav content, which is the entire screen itself. If you preview this, you should just see the content at this point. Technically, the drawer is there, it's just not open. So if we put in the opened attribute equal to true, we'll then see the drawer open up and see drawer. We can then take this a step further since this is just doing an over 
And if we do a push beside, it'll actually push the um, content that is, that is visible to the side of the drawer. And this next step, we'll add a toolbar. It will look like the toolbar is within the content, but if you look closely at the side nav, it's actually a hover element that's calculated width. And we'll look at that more closely later on. For this next step, we'll take and add the toolbar to the content area. I'm gonna provide some code for you that adds a hamburger button and allows us to open and close. Don't forget to import the mat toolbar module into this module, into the side nav module. If you wanna look at the code, we're gonna add a button as well as a title text. If you forget to include the mat button, you'll get this blocky button once you import it, you should get the nice clean flat button for the material design. Now that we have a toolbar set up, we can take a look at the content. This is where our book area will end up being. And so we're going to start to work on our side nav books as well as our side nav content. Now this will be the first router outlet that we add for Angular's router to hit. And this will be the main area that all of our content goes into. You'll see this in the illustration. It's the main area in the light pink that says matte side nav content. And then it has an arrow for router outlet. Again, make sure you include the Angular router into our module import so that it understands what router outlet means in the HTML code. At this point, we're going to begin creating our book section. For the rest of the modules that we look at that are main modules, um, often called like primary modules, that's what we're going to use for our routing. So we'll end up updating our main router as well as each child route that is lazy loaded within it. To begin this process, we're going to do ng space g space m to create a new module in the modules slash books folder. Playing paying close attention to dash dash routing so that we also get our routing uh, module as well when we're doing this. We'll then create the books component by doing a very similar command. It's ng g space c and then modules slash books and that will create us a component that is in the books folder. And that module.ts and the main entry for the folder in the routes, we're going to add to the array an object with a path called books, and then we're going to do load children, and it'll have modules, books, and then books module in the path. And what we're looking for is the books module on the end. This is often easy to forget, but you need the uh, hashtag and then books module. This will tell the Angular router that when we hit the books endpoint, that we want to lazy load that child and then go into the module and load whatever components are in the route. We also need to add an empty path so that if our page was loaded and our app was loaded at the base route, that it would know to load our, our books component at this time so we get some sort of data out to the screen. Now we need to navigate to app modules books and go into the books routing module. We'll have to add a path here so that it knows to load up on its empty path the books component otherwise nothing will load to the the angular router now if you check your screen that you're serving up at localhost 4200 you should see that books appear now most apps don't start out right away at the main focus area they have kind of a welcome page or a home page so what we're going to do here is generate the the module and the component for a welcome page we will also add the blank path within the welcome routing so that it knows to route directly to a welcome component. Now that we have our welcome module all set up for routing, we need to go back into our main app routing module and go ahead and copy the path books. And we're gonna create a welcome path that knows to route directly to the module for welcome. And that way it'll load that child route that is built into welcome itself and so we'll get a welcome page by default. This will be on our main path, so we'll switch the redirect to from books to welcome. We can then add both links to our main navigation area on the material side nav. Don't forget to include the material list module in your imports. So for one, the first one, we're gonna add welcome at the slash endpoint, and then the second one will add the books endpoint 
um, with slash books and our router will pick those up. Go ahead and try it out in the browser. You should see that when clicking home it will go to welcome and when clicking books it will go to books. You may have noticed that when you were clicking home or books that nothing indicated which page we were on. That is due to not having a class um, around the active router link. So what we're going to do is add the class active-link to our sidenav.component.scss so that we know that the active route is going to be blue. We've successfully done this and it is blue for each. However, when the books is selected, home is also highlighted. And that's due to the fact that slash is part of book still, and that is part of the router link. So what we need to do is make that more specific and add to the router link options to make sure it's an exact match for slash only, not slash books. Now when you go back to the browser, when you highlight books, it will only include books, and when you highlight home, it will only include home. The next step, we're going to work on the button. You may have noticed the SNAV toggle down below in the button area. It's been red in squiggles. We have to provide that with the element that we actually want to toggle as well as implement the function for the toggle itself. What this is doing is passing a reference for our side nav and it is toggling using the method on that reference. If you open the browser again, you can now click the hamburger button and it will open and close the side nav menu. To finish up the side nav, we also have a title that's missing. We're going to provide that in the side nav component TS and define a title. This way we can click it for a home link that will end up going back to our router link of home. For this next step, we're going to add the material drawer as well as the material drawer content. What this is going to allow for is a named router link that we'll be placing content into based on the path. For this, we're going to do NGGM for creating a new module, but this time it's going to be the book drawer and we won't need a routing because we're going to use this within books. So if you look at the folder structure, we should now have a books drawer that is included with our books file folder. We'll be adding a material drawer this time. Um, it's still part of the material side nav module, so you'll need to include that within the books module itself. And what we're going to do is set up um, a mat drawer that has a router outlet that will become our named outlet, as well as material drawer content that will be our main router outlet for books. The interesting part is that the material team decided to break out the content name this time. I'm not sure why they chose to do this and not in the side nav. Maybe it was clear that the side nav is actually just a overlay and that they calculate the width. So I don't know, good question for them. So you would have noticed that in the books component that we had two router outlets. We're going to name one of those inside of the drawer, but for now we're going to create a books detail module and component that we can also use in the main router outlet. By now you should be pretty used to this, so I'm gonna breeze through it. What we'll need to do in the books-routing module is add a reference to our new child path that is the book detail module. Um, after we do that, we can update the book detail routing to also include a empty path so we can load the book detail component. We can then load the server and you should see that book detail is now showing inside of the book route. We can now go back inside of the books.component.html and add to our mat drawer router outlet a name called book-drawer. And this way we can provide a path in our book detail that will match the outlet name so that it will provide the drawer that is listed so you will get drawer content as well as book detail content. I wanted to show an error that I received so that if you ever run into this, you know how to work it out. It'll say that a module or a component is, is missing and that perhaps you haven't exposed it. What we need to do in the book detail is make sure that we have in its exports the component that we want to bring in. And then on our import side, on the, the books detail, we're actually using this component. So we also need to remember to import it into detail. At this time, we need to make sure the drawer is opened up and pushing to the side. 
and we should start to see that our book, book drawer works and our book detail works and that will complete every part of the routers that we are working on. You may have noticed that the styling changed a little bit throughout this. I started to do all of this style in this lesson and chose to break that out into another lesson that will be up next called Angular Material Theming. We had a couple new subscribers to the Slack channel. I just thought I'd throw up here again how to get to the subscription page from ajmp.com so that you too can join if you have any questions or just want to hang out with developers. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so AJ can keep on programming.